everyone, it's nice to see you. Hope you're having a good time. I'm sitting out here in my garden and because we've been doing lots of work in our garden over these last few weeks, I thought I would share with you our sensory story all about garden wildlife. Okay, so to get started, you're going to need a few things ready for our sensory story. You're going to need the sensory story script that's available on the website if you want to have a go. You're going to need some footprints. So these are some I've just made out of uh, cardboard packaging and some corn flour, probably easier, but you can use normal flour as well if you've got some. I'm going to make some footprints on the grass. Then we need something furry. So if you've got a puppet, great. If you haven't, anything furry will do. This is one of my living room cu cushions. We're going to need an apple. Cut it up or have it whole, whatever works for you. Then we're going to see about the birds. So here's a bird's beak on a piece of card made out of something shiny. So tinfoil will do, anything like that. Can you give me another five minutes after this? After that, then you're going to need some juice or a sweet cordial or some honey or something to represent nectar. Then we're going for frog spawn. These are basil seeds. You can get them on the internet. Um, if you don't have basil seeds, which you probably don't, um, tin of lentils or anything that will give that kind of slimy feeling will be nice. We're going to be frogs, so we're going to jump up and down. If that's difficult for you or you don't fancy it, a kind of frog bean bag or something you can bounce up and down would be brilliant. And we're going to need a mirror. We're going to be pulling some faces a little bit later on. And finally, we need something spiky, so a pine cone or a dryer ball or anything you've got that feels a bit spiky. Okay, I have my two willing helpers who are going to come and help me tell the story and they're going to help read it as well. Okay, off you go then. Look, paw prints in the snow. You have a secret visitor in your garden. Can you see the paw prints? Obviously, if your garden's slightly less wild than ours, you will get better for paw prints. It's a fox. Do you see that bushy tail? That thick coat keeps her warm and snug, even on the coldest nights. Her long ears listen for danger and her shiny black nose sniffs out food. Do you want to feel the fox? Feel what the fox feels like. Does it feel soft? I'll go and see if there is any food for her. Take the fox. Come on, Mrs. Fox. That feels soft. These apples from autumn are all bruised and rotten. Someone must be enjoying them. They've pecked loads of holes. Mmm. Mmm. It's a blackbird. Look at his shiny yellow beak. Blackbirds love to eat juicy worms, but these are hard to find when the ground is frozen. Old fruit makes a tasty treat. That's very shiny. Shiny. Yellow and purple, orange and white, crocuses are sprouting up all over. But why is that flower shaking about? And what's that funny noise? Maybe the flower is shaking. And what's going? A bee. <gasps> Sunshine has broken up a bumblebee. It has been fast asleep in the sun leaves since autumn. Now it is visiting flowers to sip their sweet nectar. <gasps> nectar. 
What's that bubbly jelly floating in the pond? It's full of little black specks. Uh, this is horrendously squinty. It's kind of nice, but it's kind of uh. Can I have a go? Yeah, yeah and then my go again. Squidgy uh. 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 Let's get both hands in. We could do this for hours. Ouch. It's a frog. Those long legs are used for jumping, and those big feet for swimming. The jelly is called frog spawn. The black specks are tiny tadpoles ready to hatch. They're going to be a frog. Boing! 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 Snuffle, snuffle, grunt. Something is snuffling around the flower bed. Do you see its twitchy nose? Can you make your nose twitch? <laughs> it's a hedgehog searching for slugs, worms and snails. The first sight of danger, it rolls up into a spiky ball. Don't touch, those spikes Ouch. are sharp. Ouch. Mm. Mm. Oh, my <laughs> and that's our garden wildlife sensory story. So I'll take you for a quick tour of the garden and uh, show you some of the wildlife we've found. Hope you've enjoyed the story. Here's our garden gnome, growing by our willow with our little pond behind it. And some beautiful flowers to attract the butterflies. We've enjoyed seeing lots of butterflies in our garden. And a very special one for the bumblebees. Have you got dandelions in your garden somewhere? We like to leave them because the bees enjoy them. And this is our bugs and beetles area. We've made a little log pile from some old wood that we found in the woods and from our building works and we've made some insect houses and this is our wildlife camera and I'll show you some of the pictures we've got from that a bit later and down at the bottom of our bird feeder we have a fairy house made by the children There's some everywhere. they're all over the garden and we're even growing strawberries in the sunshine and of course it's a play space as well. Lots of fun out here, haven't we boys? <laughs>